Well, I hope you all like shitty CG, because uh, this episode was chock full of it. Uh, episode 5 of Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel, Game Goblin, uh, opens with the Blue Ranger Preston, um, so impressed by the new trending video game, Game Goblin. You're going to hear that a lot in this, uh, in this review, because you hear it a lot in the episode. Anyway, <clears throat> a single platform game, Game Goblin, is sweeping the teenagers of Summer Cove High School <clears throat> with, its, with, with its enthralling graphics. Sure, if that's what you want to call it. Anyway, these Nintendo DS lookalikes are anything but impressive. I haven't seen such bad CG in a long time. Not since... Blarp from, La from Galax... What was, what was it? What was it? Lost in Space. Yeah, the Gary Oldman Lost in Space also had Matt LeBlanc in it. <clears throat> Remember the little CG creature, Blarp? Yeah. That's about what this CG reminded me of. Um, so so raw and untested and and imperfect it was it was absolutely terrible um this is 2018 and we can't have good cg monsters yet in power rangers hmm. I, I i don't know exactly where to go other than just go on with the review anyway <clears throat> preston the blue ranger is so addicted to this game that he buys the rest of the rangers their own copies of the game and the, you know how games work nowadays folks you either uh, download a digital copy of the game or you have a physical media copy such as a disc a cartridge whatever have you well a long time ago we had what was called tiger electronic video games <laughs> and they were they were one handheld system that only played one game the same game over and over again like say um, street fighter 2 or um, full house dinosaurs even mega man and other popular games at the time were adapted into these tiger electronic handheld games now i'm not saying that the graphics in this game are supposedly supposed to be bad but here's the thing you really don't get to see much of the game um, except for, say, maybe, I don't know, five seconds worth. And it looks bad. It looks like a tiger, a colored tiger electronic handheld video game. Um, but getting back to the whole uh, uh, physical media or, or digital download thing, um, again, this is 2018. We don't, the video game companies don't sell single game devices anymore. Even stuff like leapfrog pads for toddlers have more than one game installed on it so um that was a little bit unrealistic to me because you know you figure you've got this handheld device that looks like a nintendo ds um it would play more than just one game but no it just plays game goblin game goblin <clears throat> anyway the rest of the rangers begin playing the game and they discover why it's so fun the rest of the school is playing it including the ass clowns victor and monty um victor who uh, persists on playing it in class and gets tr in trouble by the teacher and has his game goblin confiscated <laughs> and um the school receptionist is to hang on to it till the end of the school day and of course instead of being you know a mature teenager um, and especially someone like Victor, who, you know, the actor has got to be at least 25 or 26 years old, judging by his five o'clock shadow and the way he carries himself and his demeanor. And instead of waiting until the end of class, he decides to try to steal it back from the receptionist. Yeah, she's not going to notice that it's gone, and then he'll just get into more trouble at the end of the day anyhow. Of course, he's an ass clown. He's not smart. So little side story with them using a uh, fishing hook and climbing through the uh, heating ducts to try to uh, fish his game goblin away from the receptionist's desk. And of course, they get caught. Big surprise. But anyhow, the rest of the rangers, as well as the rest of the school, are playing this game. All of a sudden, we cut to uh, Madame Odious and the Galaxy Warriors ship, and we've got Game Goblin. 
the actual little creature from the game just walks right in, still the same horrible CG and all, and says that he's going to destroy the Rangers. Okay. Now it's getting really ridiculous. So, apparently the game goblin gets his power every time players score points in the game. Well, ironically, the the game pads, the game goblin systems that Preston gave to the rest of the Rangers, uh, big surprise, are cursed or have some kind of a spell or uh, they're special systems that basically they reach a certain level and they get sucked into the game. Whoever's holding it gets sucked in. Well, as you can imagine, four of the Rangers get sucked into the game. <clears throat> and uh, for say, except for Levi the Gold Ranger and Preston the Blue Ranger. Well, as they're inside the game, they meet up with Game Goblin. And then Game Goblin, the tiny little crappy CG creature, decides to grow into a full-sized monster, um, which is a ridiculous-looking monster, but this monster actually was in the Japanese version Shuriken Sentai and Ninja, and in Shuriken Sentai and Ninja, this monster was not a goblin, but a lawnmower monster. Yeah, get that. Uh, a monster made from the Blue Ranger's favorite lawnmower from Shuriken Sentai and Ninja. Of course, in this, we're focusing on the Blue Ranger only as him being irresponsible. So... Uh, we're not going to, they're not going to mention anything. The fact that it's a big giant grass looking monster with, you know, grass hair and clippings all over itself and a big ass lawnmower handle sticking out the back of its head. They didn't even make mention of that, why it looks like a lawnmower with hair, <laughs> but um, it is. But uh, no, it's Game Goblin. It's his true form. I'm really, really scared. Really scared. So, <clears throat> somehow, the rangers inside the game can still communicate with Levi the Gold Ranger through their communication devices on their wrists, which I think is a little bit strange. You figure that wouldn't work. Interdimensional stuff and all, but oh well. It works, and um, just as they're fighting this monster inside of the game, they realize uh, they can't defeat him because he keeps getting powered up by some mysterious unseen force. Um... Well, of course, it has these whole little, you know, uh, power up and, you know, 100 points. You know, it actually shows it and displays it in bright, bright, colorful, pixelated graphics on screen that whenever the monster gets points, it actually shows it. A very, very reminiscent of, uh, like, Kamen Rider x Aid. if anybody knows what that is, if anybody's seen it. Um, it's a Kamen Rider based off of um, video games. <laughs> the, whole, the whole damn series is based off of video game cliches. Um, one-ups and power-ups and level-ups and points and all this other stuff. So it was really, really um, strange to watch, that's for sure. Um, not exactly a tie-in that I think really works well. But <clears throat> the Gold Ranger, they, they basically send the Gold Ranger to find Preston and let him know the situation. And then when he finds him, he realizes, okay, well, Preston just got 100 points in the game. Or a thousand points in the game. Well, apparently the monster just got a thousand points inside the game as the rangers are battling him. So they slowly realize that it's the players who are playing the game getting the points that are giving the monster his power. And uh, every time the, mo the, po the monster is powered up to full, um, he's able to use a special beam that controls the rangers he fires it and he puts them under his control for a very short time it doesn't last very long at all um which uh which does happen in the uh japanese version shuriken sentai and ninja the monster has a beam that puts the blue ranger under his spell um and uh he has to trick the monster into thinking that he's still under his spell to basically figure out the source of his power and defeat him um which was a really funny episode of Nin ninja if you guys are interested um, go and watch it. But uh, um, in this, yeah, the monster takes a whole, takes control of Brody uh, for all about five seconds. That doesn't last. Uh, takes control of 
um, Haley, uh, that only lasts for about another 10, 10 to 15 seconds, and then takes a hold of Preston once he decides to enter the game after apologizing that, oh, it's all my fault, I've got them addicted to the game, and, and now I've got to do something to help them. And so just without even thinking recklessly, he just picks up one of the game pads in the command center, and he gets sucked into the game along with them. Well, tries to fight the monster, obviously, and help his other rangers, but he gets hit by the control beam, and he starts going ham on the rest of the rangers. Um, just really starts uh, kicking the crap out of them. Um, and uh, all this time on the outside, uh, Mick and uh, Levi have to figure out how to get the rest of the kids in Summer Cove High School to stop playing the game. Well, to do this, the stupidest idea ever... <sighs> Mick decides to dress Levi up, paint his face and arms, I guess to look like a goblin, but in the end result, he ended up looking like old Greg from the Mighty Boosh. It was an absolute, it was absolutely hilarious. Um, uh, just green, just green and black paint on the face and uh, dark eyes and it uses a mop for a hair wig. And it just, it looked like old Greg. It was, it was, it was great. It was the funniest part about the episode. Um, again, I don't think Power Rangers should be necessarily funny, but that was actually pretty damn funny. Um, I wonder if they even know that it looked like old Greg, um, and the end result. But anyway, dr dresses him up like that, sends him out in the middle of, uh, uh, the cafeteria where all the kids are playing and says, everybody stop. Don't reach level 10. When you do, this is what's going to happen. You'll turn, you'll turn into a goblin if you reach level 10. And I guess that was enough for the kids to say, oh, okay, I'm not playing the game anymore. Screw that. I don't want to look like that. And that's how they do it. <laughs> so that was really, really stupid. So they get everyone to quit playing the game and giving the monster points. Um, his, the monster's power drains, and the rangers are able to defeat him relatively easily after that. Um, then, of course, he grows. Um, makes himself grow, which is which is a little strange. Only certain monsters from certain series could do that, but um, usually in this series you see Cosmo hitting the uh, Gigantify beam, and that's what makes them grow. But no, uh, I guess because he's in his own game world, he can just make himself grow whenever. So he did. Um, the Rangers summon their Zords, and um, they finished him off. That was it. Com completely it. That's the end of the episode. That's all there was. It was, uh, it was a train wreck to watch because of the terrible CG. And the monster was terrible. <laughs> and this is episode five of Super Ninja Steel. We have like probably anywhere between 15 and 20 episodes left. This is, this is going to be hard. If this is what they're giving us now, this is going to be hard, hard, hard. So, until next week, guys, this was my review of Episode 5, Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel Game Goblin. Ugh, help me. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. You guys all know the deal. Later.